Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this uh, Friday's edition of Alaska Weather on this 21st day of January, 21st day of January 2022. I'm Dave Percy. Up first, uh, let's see, hazardous weather graphic. Starting up uh, on the eastern Arctic coast, that's a blizzard warning out there, Kaktovik Barter Island. Uh, that's out tonight and Saturday for east winds gusting at 45 miles an hour. and uh, creating whiteout conditions, poor visibilities, and again that's out for tonight through Saturday. And then Bering Strait Coast and uh, St. Lawrence Island, blizzard warning out also. And that's out for just tonight, uh, especially this evening. Conditions should begin to improve after midnight tonight and be much better toward morning, but um, looking for winds gusting to 55 miles an hour, one to four inch additional snowfall, and it'll get blown around and create whiteout conditions as well. And then the red area for the Alaska Range is a high wind warning that's out, uh, let's see, tonight and Saturday for south winds gusting to 75 miles an hour through the passes of the uh, entire Alaska Range. And then down to the south, we've got, uh, <clears throat> let's see, flood watches continue for the eastern North Gulf Coast, Yakutat, and the northern three quarters of the panhandle there, the uh, shaded areas. That's a flood watch for possible flooding due to melting snow and several inches of rain that's expected to fall, several more inches of rain expected to fall, uh, and that's out, let's see, tonight uh, through Saturday, possibly into Saturday evening. And from there, moving on to uh, satellite imagery, you can see a big mass of moisture, low pressure heading up to just, uh, well, the Alaska Peninsula there in Aleutian Range, with the front pushing northward and uh, actually pushing northward of the North Gulf Coast, seeing some clearing behind that, Copper River Basin also into Cook Inlet today, and that brought much warmer temperatures and gusty winds. Uh, temperatures pushed up near 50 degrees at Palmer today with winds gusting uh, up toward 40 miles an hour, but much stronger winds occurred at, uh, let's see, the uh, Portage Glacier at 67 mile per hour wind gusts and Rabbit Creek there, southeast Anchorage up into the hillside a little bit, 65 mile per hour wind gusts. <clears throat> and anywhere that saw the wind, temperatures rose at least into the upper 30s and well into the 40s in some locations across the Kenai Peninsula. Lower elevations in toward the inlet were held down more toward 30 or the lower 30s. And rainfall amounts, uh, heaviest on the panhandle, Sitka picked up two, uh, over two inches of rain in the last 12 hours. Juno had about one and a third inches of precipitation. Portage uh, Glacier there at the Visitor Center picked up three quarters of an inch and about half inch fell at Seward. Otherwise, uh, stayed cold. Air, cold air continued to push southward over the eastern Bering Sea, kind of shifting westward there. Wind's not as strong, but still pretty gusty for the Pribilofs. And uh, as that low pulled northward, winds gusted 50 to 55 miles an hour, Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay. Seward Peninsula, same thing. Northeast winds 50 to 55 miles per hour. Uh, during the day today. Delta Junction peak wind gusts so far 54 miles per hour and uh, again 35-45 mile an hour winds across just about all of the Kenai Peninsula and here is a chart on the chart today you can see the front pushing northward already beginning to fall apart as it uh, makes its uh, as it pushes inland and the front cold front kind of dragging holding up there pushing the heaviest rain into the southeast coast and uh, snow blowing snow conditions, Pribilofs back up St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula with those strong winds, Western Arctic coast and the Western Brooks Range area. Pretty breezy right into the central interior. Forecast for tonight, uh, that front breaks into a couple of troughs there over the interior. Some light snow showers will make its way all the way up uh, 
to the southeastern slopes of the Brooks Range, but amounts will be quite light, and then a break behind that into the Tanana Valley, with uh, that'll actually extend down into the Copper River Basin. Much milder temperatures riding in on those south and southeast winds will be quite mild tonight here across south central Alaska, North Gulf Coast. Rain heavy at times in the pan, as that next surge of moisture mist lifts northward. So very wet conditions for the southeast coast. and. Rain and snow should develop even over the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, Cuscombe Valley. Snow blowing snow will be on the decrease there for the northwest part of the state, and especially St. Lawrence Island, that low center drifting right over the island late tonight toward morning. That'll lighten the winds up considerably. Scattered rain and snow showers, or just plain snow showers across the Aleutians and the Pribilofs. And then for, and I went the wrong way there, let me go forward to tomorrow, Saturday. Again, periods of light snow, St. Lawrence Island with winds becoming light and variable, and uh, periods of uh, light snow also over the northwest part of the state as far east as the Koyukuk Valley, but amounts aren't expected to be too significant. Rain continues or it stays wet over the pan, but rainfall rates will be much lighter, winds will be lighter, and mild pattern continues, another trough lifting northward toward uh, the southern Kenai Peninsula. That'll keep that southeast, mild southeast wind blowing, but won't be won't see the wind gusts we saw today with that. It'll be dry, Copper River Basin, but warmer into the Tanana Valley, dry for the north slope in the Arctic coast. Next system there in the bottom of the picture moves northward toward the Kenai Penin or toward the Alaska Peninsula uh, during the day on Sunday. Definitely gale force winds, possible storm force winds in advance of the uh, cold front there, lifting northward, rain heavy at times into Kodiak Island, the Aleutian Range, northeast winds, uh, keep rain mixed with snow over the Fox Islands there and that could be could see wind gusts wind gusts from the northeast maybe up to 50 miles an hour there with some gale warnings and light snow with a weak trough up over the uh, northwest interior Kobuk Valley a little bit better chance of snow western Arctic coast western north slope but dry to the east and uh, light rain eastern north gulf coast and high pressure builds in dries it out over the central and southern southeast coast and that's uh, uh, mild high, so temperatures won't be very cold at all. Be uh, Well, we'll see the high temperatures. We'll go to that right now. For the lows tonight, you can see mild overnight lows, mid-30s to mid-40s for the southeast coast. Lows in the lower to mid-30s, south central Alaska, mid-20s Copper River Basin, mid to upper 30s Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island. Upper 20s for the central and western Aleutians, near 20 for the Pribilofs. A shade below zero, St. Lawrence Island, but uh, below zero temperature, uh, the zero degree isotherm getting pushed northward to the Brooks Range. And then the highs for tomorrow, uh, five to 10 below for the highs uh, for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, and 15 to 25, call it for the central interior. Uh, windy areas like Delta Junction will probably crack the frost point there and mid to upper 30s for the highs for the Copper River Basin, 40 to 50 for the Panhandle, and upper 30s to lower 40s, South Central Alaska, mid 40s, Kodiak Island, and 35 to 40 for the Alaska Peninsula, lower 30s, Central Western Aleutians, upper 20s for the Pribilofs, and finally getting above zero, St. Lawrence Island, and then not falling too far below that for Sunday morning, and uh, for uh, lows in the panel, staying above freezing all of the North Gulf Coast and the Southeast Coast with 30s, and upper 20s to lower 30s, South Central Alaska, staying above zero, much of in the interior, the exception being the Seward Peninsula, Noatak Valley, and the North Slope and the Arctic Coast. And then the highs, uh, 40 to 50, we're in the 40s for the Panhandle, and with uh, possible sunshine, central and southern areas, and uh, mid to upper 30s, Copper River Basin, 38 to 44, South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, staying below freezing all north and west of the Alaska Range. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, VFR, Arctic coast of the Brooks Range. Uh, south of the Brooks Range there, uh, Koyukuk Valley and the southeastern slopes of the Brooks Range, uh, IFR changes to marginal VFR, the zone of I VFR there north of the Alaska Range in the mid and upper Tana Valley. And some uh, IFR, or actually a lot of IFR, southeast coast, north Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, up across the Copper River Basin, cutting across the southern Kenai Peninsula, southern Cook Inlet, all of Kodiak Island, quite a band of IFR from the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, across Norton Sound, and into the southwest interior, all the Cuscombe Valley, and right on down into Bristol Bay. And then behind the system, uh, breaking out the VFR, Nunavak Island, and the eastern and southeast Bering Sea, all the Aleutians, v 
VFR to start and that uh, pretty much holds in uh, into the afternoon but some IFR slipping up in toward ADAC and ATCA as well as Amchitka during the uh, afternoon hours otherwise Southern Bering Sea VFR Kribloff's become VFR southwest coast same thing as that uh, band of IFR pushes inland and holds over the Cuscombe Valley western Alaska Range Southern Cook Inlet Kodiak Island and the North Gulf Coast socked in IFR for the Panhandle Marshall VFR Copper River Basin northern to Sitna Valley but north of the Alaska Range good VFR now all the way up into the Yukon Flats and then some more marginal VFR on the southern slopes of the Brooks Range with some patchy areas of IFR VFR North Slope Arctic Coast and IFR there for the northwest part of the state through the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island and then for uh, Sunday morning a band of IFR in the western Arctic coast right on down covering all of south central Alaska Copper River Basin North Gulf Coast still IFR for the Panhandle and uh, IFR south side of the Alaska Peninsula but looking pretty good out over the central southern Bering Sea got marginal VFR though from Atka Island to the Fox Islands Alaska Peninsula and then some IFR now up over the northern Bering Sea St. Matthew Island to the Bering Strait and the Yukon Delta Coast and then for the afternoon band of IFR western Arctic coast down across the Noatak Valley Kotzebue through the Seward Peninsula eastern St. Lawrence Island to the Yukon Delta coast and VFR southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians Pervilov's looking good Sunday afternoon VFR right up the Yukon River Valley all the way to the border and uh, IFR Bristol Bay Alaska Peninsula North Gulf Coast Kodiak Island improving now for the Panhandle looks like some VFR pushing into the western areas and a two bag VFR becoming marginal late afternoon and that again same trend will be a mostly VFR day but trending toward marginal conditions in the latter part of the afternoon Lake Clark and Merrill IFR at times the entire day same forecast for rainy windy marginal VFR but VFR out the north entrance into the valley and same pattern for Isabel marginal VFR north entrance pretty good and Mintesta same thing south entrance marginal into the pass and then VFR north side Tanita west side VFR otherwise marginal VFR more likely on the eastern entrance Portage IFR lowest conditions eastern entrance and Chilkoot and White solid IFR Freezing levels 2,000 feet uh, up into uh, just north of the North Gulf Coast, covering Bristol Bay. 4,000 feet there across the Kachemak Bay area and down Kodiak Island and up to 8,000 feet there into Prince of Wales Island. But at the surface, still very close to the Aleutians. <clears throat> icing, considerable moderate rime icing North Gulf Coast, actually from Prince William Sound into the Panhandle. Uh, heaviest moisture in that area than otherwise isolated moderate rime or mixed icing over the western interior Bristol Bay Kodiak Island lifting just north of St. Lawrence Island jet stream southerlies 60 to 70 knots there St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound turning southeast there for the Seward Peninsula southwest 60 knots eastern Aleutian strongest winds though the main jet core right across the southeast coast there 140 to 145 knots 9,000 foot winds, uh, 50 to 60 knot winds there from the North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle, 50 knot southwest winds, east central, eastern interior, as well as the northern Bering Sea, but pretty light over the southern Bering and Aleutians of 3,000 feet, light variable winds, southern Bering Sea, the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, south 45 into the North Gulf Coast and the southern Panhandle, westerly 40 knots, northern Bering Sea. Moderate chop, all the southeast coast, north Gulf Coast, and the Copper River Basin, and the eastern Alaska Range. Floating hundreds of miles from Earth, astronauts get a unique perspective of our planet. While they might recognize landmarks, space is the only place they can see the very edge of our planet's atmosphere. From orbit, particularly looking at the horizon, did bring to mind how thin the atmosphere is. It's like an onion skin around this great big ball of the Earth. This uppermost layer of Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere, also overlaps with the very beginning of space. It's the job of NASA's new mission, GOLD, the Global Scale Observations of the Limon Disk Instrument, to study this region, a region that isn't just for astronauts to explore, but that affects humans every day down on the ground. For one thing, this layer of the upper atmosphere helps protect us from harmful radiation and energy emanating from the sun. 
But in our modern society, it does so much more. It affects the smartphone that sits in your pocket and the radio waves that guide our airplanes. The ionosphere is a crucial layer of the atmosphere through which our communications and GPS signals travel. And when this region changes, it impacts those communication signals. Changes can occur above this region from the sun's activity, also known as space weather. Changes can also occur below from Earth's weather, such as hurricanes and wind patterns. Gold connects the dots between how space weather and Earth's weather shape the upper reaches of the atmosphere. But this region isn't easy to study. The ionosphere spans roughly 60 to 400 miles from Earth's surface, which is too high for aircraft and scientific balloons, and the lower regions are too low to easily study with satellites. What are attainable, however, are the swaths of red and green light shining out from the upper atmosphere. Formed when the sun's rays hit atmospheric molecules, this light, named airglow, comes from green and red bands of glowing gas. Some of the airglow is invisible to our eyes, shining in infrared and ultraviolet light, which can only be seen with scientific instrumentation. Taking advantage of our planet's natural glow is gold. The gold instrument, which is about the size of a mini-fridge, is hitching a ride on a commercial communication satellite, SES-14. The satellite's orbit lies 22,000 miles above Earth, where it can record images in ultraviolet light to monitor changes in airglow across the globe. These images give information on the temperature, density and composition of particles in the upper atmosphere. Gold collects these observations faster than any mission has ever done before. It captures an image of Earth's entire disk every 30 minutes, allowing scientists to see how the upper atmosphere evolves throughout the day. Gold joins a host of missions studying the very nature of space around Earth, the Sun and planets. As NASA ventures farther and farther from home, knowing the nature of space itself is crucial for our journey to understand our solar system and beyond. There's a new class of chemical compounds impacting the Earth's ozone layer and raising concerns among some scientists. But a new NASA analysis indicates stratospheric ozone could actually be impacted more by climate change and the continued release of already banned chemicals. The Earth's ozone hole is showing signs of recovery, decades after the landmark agreement called the Montreal Protocol that banned many chemical compounds harmful to the ozone layer. So we know the Montreal Protocol was a huge success. This was signed in the late 1980s when scientists and policymakers from around the world gathered together to try to save the ozone layer. The chemicals they regulated persist in the atmosphere for many decades. They thin the ozone layer and they create a seasonal hole over Antarctica. They basically take away part of our planet's natural sunscreen and that increases the risk of skin cancer and damage to plants. Scientists have projected the ozone hole could disappear almost completely by about 2075, but several factors could delay that recovery. There are some industrial compounds that are not banned by the Montreal Protocol, but as they enter the atmosphere, they will also hurt the ozone layer. But the unregulated compounds have a short lifespan in the atmosphere, unlike the chlorofluorocarbons that were originally regulated. So they have a short-lived impact on ozone, and we don't think they'll delay recovery by more than a few years. We project that by 2050, more than half of the ozone-depleting compounds in the atmosphere will come from long-lived substances banned by the protocol. Because these compounds stay in the air for such a long time, compared to the unregulated, short-lived compounds, they will have a disproportionate and lingering impact on ozone. So any non-compliance with the protocol can have significant consequences. And the really big uncertainty in ozone layer recovery is climate change. There are many naturally produced ozone-depleting substances that are emitted by the oceans. And as the oceans continue to warm due to climate change, those emissions will increase and that will further delay ozone recovery. Scientists want to better understand how climate change will affect ozone recovery. This is a hard problem. As a scientific community, we need to work on this major issue. We now have a powerful new tool, 
to simulate atmosphere and its interaction with land and ocean to study this issue. And that's what we're going to do. How can you see the atmosphere? The answer is blowing in the wind. Tiny particles known as aerosols are carried by the air around the globe. This visualization uses data from NASA satellites combined with our knowledge of physics and meteorology to track three aerosols, dust, smoke, and sea salt. Sea salt, shown here in blue, is picked up by winds passing over the ocean. As tropical storms and hurricanes form, the salt particles are concentrated into the spiraling shape we all recognize. With their movements, we can follow the formation of Hurricane Irma and see the dust from the Sahara, shown in tan, get washed out of the storm center by the rain. Advances in computing speed allow scientists to include more details of these physical processes in their simulations of how the aerosols interact with the storm systems. The increased resolution of the computer simulation is apparent in fine details like the hurricane bands spiraling counterclockwise. Computer simulations let us see how different processes fit together and evolve as a system. By using mathematical models to represent nature, we can separate the system into component parts and better understand the underlying physics of each. Today's research improves next year's weather forecasting ability. Hurricane Ophelia was very unusual. It headed northeast, pulling in Saharan dust and smoke from wildfires in Portugal, carrying both to Ireland and the UK. This aerosol interaction was very different from other storms of the season. As computing speed continues to increase, scientists will be able to bring more scientific details into the simulations, giving us a deeper understanding of our home planet. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecast, south winds 20 knots for the coastline of the Panhandle. Seas running 11 to 15 feet, highest on the south coast. Clarence Strait, south winds 15 knots with gale force gusts to 35 knots. Seas at about 8 feet. Central and northern inner channels, southeast winds 15 knots, three seas 3 feet. And for the day on Sunday, inside waters, southeast winds 15 knots, 3 foot seas, south coast, South 15, seas 15 feet, and the north coast, southeast 15 knots, with seas still up around 15 feet. Prince William Sound, small craft advisories for the day on Saturday. East winds 25 knots with 5 foot seas. For the north Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, winds will be southeast at 20 knots. And for Cook Inlet, north to northeast winds 15 to 20 knots, seas and ice free waters 5 feet. Kamishak Bay, east winds 25 knots with 7 foot seas. Those increase uh, considerably on Sunday. Kamishak Bay, gale warnings, east winds, 40 knots. Southern Cook Inlet, uh, small craft advisories, northeast winds, 30 knots. North of the Forelands, winds will be northeast at 20 knots. North Gulf Coast, gale warnings, southeast winds, 35 to 40 knots, sea 16 to 18 feet. Barren Islands, gale warnings also, southeast winds, 35 knots. Prince William Sound, southeast, 30 knot winds in the forecast, seas building to 7 feet. Kodiak Island, small craft advisory, south winds 25 knots. And the Alaska Peninsula, north to northwest winds 20 to 25 knots. Bristol Bay, west winds at 20 knots. <clears throat> and for Sunday, Bristol Bay, brisk wind advisories, east winds 30 knots. Northeast 30 knot winds for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. Pacific side, south 25 knots. Castle Cape, all the way up the east side of Ka uh, Kodiak Island, winds will be southeast at 35 knots with seas a shade over 20 feet. And for Unalaska Island, on average, north winds at 15 knots with 8 to 12 foot seas. Unmak Island, northeast 15 to 20 knot winds and 10 to 15 knot winds from varying directions for the central Aleutians, as well as Amchitka Peninsula, Shimia, and Attu, as well as Kiska. Light winds tomorrow. And for Sunday, South winds 15 knots, Shimia to Kiska, southwest 15 from Chitka Island, 
ADAC and ATCA, west northwest breeze 15 to as high as 20 knots, and small craft advisories for the eastern Aleutians, west to northwest winds at 25 to 30 knots, 9 to 15 foot seas. For the southwest coast, uh, west to southwest winds 15 knots, and for the Pribilof, St. Paul, St. George, St. Matthew Island, west winds 20 knots, and southeast winds 30 knots, good for a brisk wind advisory, St. Lawrence Island. And for Norton Sound, south winds at 20 knots. <clears throat> Even lighter winds for Norton Sound on Sunday, uh, southeast at 10. Only 15 knot winds now for St. Lawrence Island from the southeast. Yukon Delta Coast, northeast at 15. And brisk wind advisories for the area south of Nunavak Island, Cusquam Delta Coast, north at 30 knots, north 20 knots with the Pribilos, but south at 20 knots for St. Matthew Island. Gale warnings for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast Saturday. East winds 35 knots, brisk wind advisories for the central coast all the way down to Cape Thompson. Where winds will be northeast at 30 knots, brisk wind advisories for north winds from Cape Thompson to Wales at 25 knots. Then on Sunday, winds diminish and shift direction southeast 20 knots from Wales to Cape Beaufort, southeast 15 western Arctic coast, west or east 15 for the central coast. And eastern Beaufort Sea coast, much lighter winds uh, in the forecast for Sunday out of the west at 15 knots. And for tonight, uh, another surge of moisture with a frontal system pushes northward to the North Gulf Coast again as the original one washes out and kind of breaks into a couple of troughs, uh, weakening considerably. Uh, main precipitation area will be over the west and southwest part of the state. Heaviest by far will be on the North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle for rain moderate to heavy at times. Flood watch continues northern half of the Panhandle as well as the North Gulf Coast. Blizzard warning continues to the Eastern Arctic Coast, St. Lawrence Island, and a high wind warning tonight into Saturday for the Alaska Range. For wind gusts to 75 miles an hour, but it'll be warm and occasionally wet across all of Southern Alaska. And that'll continue into tomorrow, but precipitation will be a little more scattered and lighter, especially over the Panhandle, but won't end completely. Snow showers over the Bering Sea kind of uh, mix out and uh, end over the Eastern Aleutians. And for Sunday, next storm with uh, gale and possible storm force winds comes rolling northward with uh, rain heavy at times back to the Alaska Peninsula, Aleutian Range, Kodiak Island, and western North Gulf Coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.